Hello, everybody. Welcome in. Um, I'm Michelle, and today we're going to make, we're going to do a bead embroidered piece. Um, I've got here a teardrop cabochon. It is, I made it, it's handmade from polymer clay, and it's a, got a beautiful um, design, uh, kind of a lacy design, um, and whatever color you put underneath, it shines through these little little windows of transparent clay, and um, I just put um, a mixture of transparent and white clay underneath. Um, so you just get this really pretty antique white uh, design coming through and uh, I learned to do that if you'd like to know how to make that that cane out of polymer clay to cover your cabochons or beads um, I uh, Susan at Turtle Soup Beads she has a great tutorial on how to do that but um, this is the materials that you'll need. I've got some six millimeter carnelian. Now you don't have to use carnelian. You could use whatever six millimeter beads you want. I've got some ceramic flowers. I'm going to try to incorporate those. I'm going to we're going to bezel this cabochon and then uh, make it into a necklace. This we're going to turn this. We're going to make this a pendant and then turn our pendant into a necklace. Um, I've got some Czech rondelles. Uh, I think they are six by eight. I got some Czech fire polish, four millimeter, and this is carnelian. I got some four millimeter fire polish bronze. And I got a couple of extra flower beads here don't know if I'm going to use those. I've got some 11 Navajo white, some blush 11 O's, and some uh, dark bronze 15 O's. I've got a size 10 or 11 beading needle. Got a couple, about a wingspan and a half of uh, wildfire, and I'm ready to go. So get all your materials together, come back, and we'll get started. Okay, so we're coming up through the back, and we've got a knot tied at the end of our our string. And so we'll pull that all the way through, and the knot will catch. Go back down through. And then come back up and that way it's good and secure. Come up right alongside of that cabochon. That's right where you want to start the beads. Of course don't hit the cabochon. Okay there we go. Come right up alongside the cabochon. I'm going to pick up four 11 O's. Bring those down. See where they lay? Come right at the end of them. And go dead and go down through right beside the cabochon and pull I've got a lot of string here and then come up through in between the two middle 
and like that. And pull. And then go through the last two beads. Right like that. All right, pick up four more. Bring those down. Right at the end of those beads, go down through. Your interfacing. And pull. Rose. Just a minute. Okay, come up through the middle in between the four beads. Pull. And then go through the last two beads. Sorry about that. My uh, cat had a kitten. Well, the kitten's old enough to play and she she's really playful and stuff. And the mom, the mother cat is just, she gets so rough with her. And she had she she's been known to do that in the past also. Pick up four more seed beads. Go down through the interfacing right at the end of those beads. Pull your string come up through the very center in between the two middle beads try to come up you know close as you can get to the cabochon and go through those last two beads I don't know how that happened. I got a little space, but that's okay because we're going to put a row of 15s on top of it. I don't know how that happened. Make sure your strings pulled tight. All right. Pick up four more 11 O's. Bring those down. Rose, stop. Needle down through your interfacing right at the end of those beads. You don't want them to be bunched up, so don't go too close. Come up through the middle, the very center, those center beads. And go through those last two beads. Keep doing that all the way around. We'll get back. I'll show you how to start the second row. There's 
All right. Now, after you've come all the way around your cabochon, if there's, okay, first of all, you're going to go through all the beads again. And I've come around once, but I've got a, a little blank spot right there. And when that happens, all you have to do is fill it in with a bead. So, and I've got another blank spot right here. So I'm going to pick up a bead. I'm going to continue going through my 11 now seat beads around the cabochon. No. Hmm. Oh, I picked up two beads. I thought I might have. Okay. In that case, just gonna I'm just gonna break one. I've cut my bail making pliers. Let's see if they'll work. Oh my, yeah. Okay, and then just pull that bead into place. Okay. It may stick out a little bit because there's um you know there's a string there. And that's gonna dry. Okay, there it went into place. And then go through when you um go through all your beads again that go around the cabochon. It just makes them, it pulls them in a line and just makes them look so much neater. That's an important step of this process is to go right, you know, back through all the beads. And so and I'm going to pick up one because I've got a space here. And I'm going to go through some on the other side. And pull that tight. And see, like I said, just like with the other one, because there is a string there, it's not going to lay completely flush with the cabochon, which drives me crazy. But there are going to be other beads on, so you're not going to be able to tell. There are going to be beads on top of this anyway. So, once you're finished going all the way back around, um, we're going to do this a little bit different. We're going to pay Odie the 15 O's on. So pick up a 15 O, and coming out of here, skip a bead. Go through the next bead. Where did it go? It disappeared. Anyway, pick up a 50 now. Come out of this bead, skip a bead, and go through the next bead. All right, pick up a 15 now. Coming out of here. Skip a bead and go through the next bead.
pick up a 50 now. Skip a week, go through the next week. Pick up a 50 now. Coming out of here, skip a B, go through the next 11 out, C, B. And continue doing this all the way around. doesn't really matter where they're sitting because when we go back around we'll go um, and put added beads in between these two the or these 15 O's um, it'll pull them up and uh, and they'll line around the inside of these 11 O's and it'll look really pretty they like fold up over the cabochon Alright, so continue doing this all the way around, and we'll come back, and um, I'll show you the next move. Okay, we're back, and we're coming up um, the last, well, we skipped one, came up through the last seed bead, and now we need to step up. And so our thread's coming out right here, and there's a 15 0 setting right above it. So we need to go through that 15 0. Right there. And now we're ready for the next row. Alright, so we're going to pick up a 15 0. And we are going to just go through the next 15 0 that's sticking up. And that's all we're going to be doing on this row is filling in the gaps in between these 15 0s. Pick up a 15 now. Go through the next. Picking up 15 now. Pick up a 15 now. Sometimes you might have to look for them. It might be down, laying beside of an 11 0, or it may even work its way up underneath. I don't know about that, but you might have to search. Pick up a 15 0 and go through the next sticking up 15 0. Pick up a 15 now. And go through that next 15 now. Okay. And do that all the way around. And once you get all the way around. step up like we did on this row and then go through all the 15 O's again and then come back and we'll do the next row 
Okay, we've went, we went all the way back around with the 15 nose that we just put on, and um, then I went down, ended up somewhere coming out of one of the 15 nose. I went down through the back, and then back up through right beside of the 11 nose, and we're going to do. Um, a row of three millimeter beads. I didn't, I, I wasn't going to use three millimeter, um, but I will have those in the description bar. Um, always make sure you read that description bar because if I forget anything in the, you know, uh, I'll always add it in there. So let's pick up. Uh, let's see, how many of these should we do? Let's try four. Bring them down. Needle down through your interfacing. Come up through in the center. And then go through those last two beads. Pick up four more three millimeters. Bring them down. Needle down through the inner facing at the end of the row or at the end of those four beads. Come up through in the center of the two middle beads. Close. And then go through those last two. Pick up four more. Slide them down. Come up through the center. Go through the last two beads. <clears throat> Pick up four more. Slide them down.
needle down through at the end of that four beads needle up through in the center of those four beads pull and then go up through the last two of the four beads all right continue doing this row when you get done and your last bead go back through to reinforce and and uh, straighten those beads out and then come back and we'll go to the next move okay I got that row done and I went around uh, to reinforce it now I believe that I will well first of all let's go down through and back up and get ready for our next row and I'm going to do a row of four millimeter I want this to be a good size pendant So we'll bring those down. Needle down through. Come up through the middle. and through the last two beats pick up four more and continue this row as we have with all the others bringing them down going down through back up through the middle and out the last two beads and then reinforce going around all the beads again and then come back and we will finish up by putting the backing on the pendant cutting it out backing it with suede or felt or whatever you use um, and we'll finish up the pendant and then we'll get started on the necklace okay all right so we're done well I'm done with uh, the pendant and so when I need to go through to the back And tie a couple of knots. Let's see, let's get down here. You might have to go manipulate your way to some thread loops on the back and go up under a piece of thread. Pull and needle through the loop and pull tight. Okay. <clears throat> now you can either cut this off, but we still need to use it to attach our leather. So I'm going to try to keep it on, but I'm going to very carefully cut around. Well, first of all, I'm going to take off all the excess. Not all, but some of the excess. 
material or interfacing here. And be really careful not to cut your threads. Go around. Go around, getting feeling your way. around the edge of the beads. Oops, I'm sorry I wasn't in. But I'm just cutting along the edge of the beads. But looking at the back side making sure I'm not cutting any threads. Whichever way is easiest for you. Whether you're looking at the front or feeling the beads with your scissors and looking from the back. Well, I'm going to have to look at the front so I can Okay. Now you are, you know, looking straight on, you won't see the white, but looking on the side, you, um, but you won't be able to see it once we get our, our backing and so our be edging around, the bead edging around, so I think that's going to be fine. If you would like, you could color the edge with a marker, with a sharpie. Um, color a dark color. But I'm going to leave mine the way it is, I think. And uh, cover it with the beads when I put the edging on. I think it'll be okay. So, now we're going to have to bring our thread up through to the front so we can cut out our and now make sure whichever side I want this facing I want this um, side of my leather facing outward so this is how you want to cut it. You want to make sure the side that you want facing outward is facing outward. And then just same thing you did with the interfacing. Cut around. Now this is not faux leather. This is not ultra suede. This is, I've got a piece of real leather here. So it's a little more tedious and hard to work with, um, yeah, especially trying to needle through it. Hopefully, I won't. It won't be too bad. But uh, I usually have to use a thimble to get through this. And 
and cutting it is not much easier. So let me line it back up. All right, I think that's good. Okay. <clears throat> now, you can put a little bit of glue to help hold that on. I get to take the E6000. Don't get it too close to the sides. But that'll help hold it on while we sew our edging on. Okay, so we are coming out. It doesn't really, let's see. Hmm, does it matter? I think that'll be fine. All right, so whichever bead we're going to, I think I'm going to take it Navajo weight 11 -0, And I'm going to come from the back oh that went through pretty easy yay and get both the the backing the interfacing both pull and then needle up through that edging bead Okay, pick up another, go through the leather or the backing through the interfacing and pull. All right, let's see. Where's not sure which side I need to look through. I think this way. Let's see if it don't look right. I'll change it. Don't look right. So go back through. If it don't look right, and needle up through the other way. Uh, 
I'm going to need a bigger bead here anyway. It's not covering my white interfacing. So I'm going to have to take my needle off and pull it all out. And when I, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to use these uh, four millimeter carnelian. So go through the backing, the pick up a bead, go through the, the backing, the interfacing, come through the front. And then needle up to that bead just started. Let's pick up another bead. Turn through the backing. And the interfacing. And you walk through. Pick up a bead. Come through the backing and the interfacing. Needle up through. And I hope these aren't too big. Pick up a bead, come through the backing, the interfacing. the front and pull and needle up through that bead pick up a bead we'll do this one more time together come through the backing and the interfacing Pull and needle up through the bottom of that bead. Oops. And when you get finished, this is going to be sealed all the way around. with bead with beads edging all along the edges you won't even be able to see that way interfacing all right so finish doing that all the way around and we get back and we'll go on to the next step okay I'm back and I let this idea simmer overnight and uh, so I brought out a few more beads because instead of making this, yes, this is going to be a pendant still, but instead of putting a bale at the top, you know, uh, and then hanging it from the top, I decided to come up the sides 
on this piece um, at the sides and make it um, a shorter like a, a collar almost a choker so um, and I also decided to dang uh, make some fringe off the bottom and that's why I've got these leaves and the spikes I'm not sure which I'm going to use for hang off the dangles but um, I'll decide while in the process um, I also brought out some uh, nine millimeter freshwater pearls in um they called it wine color wine um, um, so I think it matches with the color color scheme I also brought out some little four millimeter gemstones faceted gemstones I think it's carnelian some of it is anyway it's kind of a little mix in the right color scheme um, I also brought out these I think they're um, they're a rock, like a rondelle but I think they're about a 10 millimeter this is going to be like a kind of a chunky uh, collar piece I also brought out these check glass pearls in 10 a 6 millimeter and there's also some four and three a couple of those I don't know if I'll use those or not um, I also brought out some looks like eight millimeter check by cones about seven of those and we already had the carnelian okay and I brought out some little six millimeter glass cubes crystal cubes and some little metal um, triangle nuggets, rounds, and uh, some little, I don't know, they're just bicone shaped in antique bronze. And there's a bead that don't belong. Alright, so I'm, I'm designing this as I go. So um, I've got a needle and I've got a probably a wingspan and a half of fire line and um, I think we're going to start with the fringe. You've already okay. You cut. You did the around the piece, connecting the leather onto the interfacing and when you come up out of the, uh, the your last little bead uh, putting on the back um, just make sure you go down through the the one the bead right beside it and back out of it and go the other way a couple times and, and that'll hold you know you don't have to tie a knot because that holds very well and then you can either use keep using and go from there and work your way down to the side where we're going to start or the bottom where we're going to start with the fringe or you can get another piece and mine was too short so I had to I had to uh, go ahead and, and get some more uh, fire line on my needle so um, first we got to figure out how many fringe we're going to have and probably about five and let's lay our needle in the center and that's the center One, these two right here will be our right here's the center in between these two beads so we'll count over one, two, three, and that's where my fringe is going to start. So I'm going to go down uh, 
the third bead from where I'm going to come out. So I'm going to come down three beads. I'm going to go down through the pool. I've got a stop bead on also, just with just enough to sew in the tail, which I probably don't even need to, but just to be sure I will. And then come down that next bead beside of it. And then I'll go up through the next the next bead beside of that. And then we'll come down out of the bead that we want to start our fringe on. So get to there, get your beads, make sure you got, you don't have to have the same beads I have, but size wise, you might want to do similar sizes, that is all, similar sizes to what I have, and I've got some 8s, some 10s, some little 4x6 rondelles. I've got some 9mm pearls, I've got some 4mm gemstones, and some, I don't think I'm, I think I'll use the big pearls here for the necklace, but I might use a few of the small ones on the French, and then I'll definitely be using some of these little cubes, but you could use regular 6mm crystals, not square, that'll be fine. All right, so get ready, and we'll come back and do the fringe. Okay, um, we're back, and let me get this tail all the way. Um, I wanted to show you exactly what I did. So I came out of that bead, and I put a four millimeter gemstone, and then a four millimeter round metal bead and then a uh, triangle heshi bead he she heshi not sure which um and then a rondelle a bronze four by six millimeter rondelle and then another heshi bead and then a four millimeter round and then the four millimeter pearl has she square six millimeter crystal cube? Has she four millimeter round bronze four millimeter round pearl? Wait, am I going the wrong way here? Okay, so after the six millimeter cube, that's our center. So all these coming down through here, that's our center. And then I just backwards repeated the same thing until uh, I got down here to the Heshi. I did not add the rounds and the gemstone. I added a leaf. And this leaf, it's drilled straight down through, which was a bummer. But it's okay. We made it. I made it work, and you can too. Um, if you happen to have one that's drilled down through the center, that's what I was hoping for. Um, but all you have to do is um, just go down, add a little pico, or at least one bead. And when you come back, don't go through that bead. And just come up through, and that bead will be like a stopper on the ends. But this way. All I did was just go down, go through the leaf, and then back up through the hash, the other beads. Um, and now I'm on my way back up through, 
and when I get up through I'll be coming down out well I can do that right now so I'm on my way coming up through the strand make sure you don't miss any because they'll be all sitting all wonky if you do and you want this to be a little loose so it'll have free movement but you don't want to see any string it's a balancing act when it comes to fringe so I'm working my way up through the fringe And up through that lot, that bead on the pendant itself. Okay. Now, I'm not sure, I'm not going to do the exact pattern on every fringe, I don't think. Let me get my phone up here. Then we go down through the next bead. Okay, and then we start. All over again. Okay, so I'll use another four millimeter gemstone to start off. And since they're so close, um, you're going to have to offset your, like, <clears throat> here's the bigger bead. Well, I'm going to have to have a small bead there. And then I'm going to have to put my bigger beads in this area. And then we could probably have the cube beads right beside each other since they are small. You know, so, so gemstone. Um, I don't know. Let's try one of these bicone shaped metal beads um gemstone I'm not sure if that bicone that metal bronze or brass bicone is dark enough no I don't like it I'm going to take that off I'm going to take that off and uh, start again all right. Everything tangles on camera. All right. So I don't even think I like that color of gemstone. Let's see. Get a Orange one. Alrighty. 
and let's see. Gemstone. Let's do our rounds. Metal, just like we did last row. And a Heshi. And then let's do a cube. Let's do where we've got our bronze, um, uh, bronze rondelles. Let's, I'm going to do a cube. So Heshi. And then around. And then we will do our big, bigger beads. Let's do, uh, do we want this there? Or do we want to? Come on. Come on, Pearl. Sorry, guys. Here we go. So we got a pearl there. A bigger pearl there. And uh, rounds. Another round. And then we'll do another Heshi. Oh, I know. One of these. Maybe. It's an 8mm by cone. Heshi. Now, all right, so let's. To a round, four millimeter metal bronze round, and the Heshi and a cube. And a Heshi and a round and a Heshi and then the leaf. Let's see which side the leaf. The I think they're a little different on yes they're a little more iridescent on the front so I'll we'll come through and then we'll go up back up through all the row of beads Okay. 
and then back up there that gemstone and the bead we are coming out of uh, got some that's holding us on here okay and that looks pretty I like that I'm gonna have to do something with that tail it's driving me crazy okay so there's two fringe and let's see let's find the center it looks like we're gonna have to have six fringe to make it even let's see Let's see, let's find the center. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Okay, we're going to have to have six fringe. So, we're going to have two in the center. I did that kind of awkwardly, but that's okay. You just, you know, design. That's, how, that's what designing is. It's just going you know just having an idea and making it come to life and when something comes up dealing with that something and if you don't like it you can tear it all out it's just beads and string but I have such fun designing things that's love to do that and uh, I'm just gonna cut that it'll be just fine and then I'm gonna melt it down get that out of my way so there we have the first two okay the next strand is going to be one of the center strands there's going to be two strands in the center so you got to come up with a plan it's you gotta you know what do I want for those two center strands um what do I want for the center, the center piece of those two center strands? The only reason I just hate that there's going to be two center strands because I can't put big beads beside one another. I don't think. <clears throat> no, there's no way. Um, so, have the I doubt. Hmm. Let's see. Probably use these two pearls as the center strands. You know, center of the strand. All right. Nevertheless, let's go down through our next bead so we can start our center, one of our center strands. This is hard to do, I'm trying to do it for the camera backwards. But I hope I'm getting better at staying in frame. I know in the beginning I really was bad at it. There we go. All right, what's going on here? There we go. Okay. So there. See, that's pulled too tight. See how that kinks it up? Let's give it a little tug. Make sure they're laying freely. They got free movement. Okay, I'm going to start, but we don't want to see any thread too, so it's it's a fine line. Let's pick up another gems four millimeter gemstone, or whatever's your 
your go-to bead for the first bead of the strand. And then, let's see. Hmm. Let's do another round metal bead. And a hishi and a bronze rondelle. These are heavy, and on the strand it says fire polished gemstones. I just wonder if they are. I mean, I thought it maybe it was a mistake, but every strand I've seen says fire polished bronze gemstone. If anybody knows, leave it in the comments. Is bronze a gemstone? I mean, or is it just like gemstone but maybe coated and then round we did a that uh rondelle he she round metal bronze bead and then okay so the middle bead will be on let's say one huh. well it might be these pearls on three or four strands in the center. We'll see. But for the next two strands it's gonna be these pearls. Six millimeter check pearls round and then a round metal and then a hishi yeah a hishi and then we're going to do a cube and a hishi And a round metal and I say round metal in a small tiny four millimeter pearl. Let's see, how many of those do I have? And around metal. And a Hishi. And a bronze rondelle and a hishi. And rounds metal. And a hashi. Might have to get some more. Yikes. Let's see. That's the same. Yeah, I need one. Mm -mm. Where'd they go? I'll be right back. Excuse me. Okay, I looked more closely. Um, and was something straight. <laughs> the needle I use, was using wasn't straight, I guess. And this row, this one right here is the center. 
So, and I also found some more pearls, six millimeter pearls, this color, so I'm in good shape. Um, but this strand coming up is the center strand, and so we don't have two center strands, which is good. It's a good thing. So, um, and I got more Heshi beads out. So let's add that final Heshi, and let's add our leaf. Which one's this? There it is. Let's see. Oops. Let's add it. Pull the stream. And then go back up through that tassel, that row of beads that we just added. taking care not to skip. Oh my. Don't miss any of the beads on your way back up through. And making sure that your string doesn't have any knots so you don't do what I just did. So we're on our way back up through that strand. It's been hot, hot, hot here where I live. In my swimming pool, I can I don't know what's going on with it. It's like I can't get enough chemicals in it. To stop the growth of algae. Alright, now we're coming back down through that next. I guess that center. Wait. Yeah. bead. Now make sure your tassels are loosey-goosey so you got plenty of movement but no string showing and these these rows don't have to be exactly even I like a little bit of you know difference in the length that way it's like a truly a fringe you know up the uh, little down the center one maybe I'll bring it up a little bit and the next one down a little bit just a hair and um, I don't want these to be kinked up so I've got to make sure to pull enough string. Okay. Let's start with the 4 millimeter gemstone. I 
um, let's go four millimeter round that should be let's go uh, four mil a six millimeter cube as she bead and a round metal bead and let's do since this is the middle strand let's do something a little different Oh, that's a six millimeter bicone. Uh, let's do a round. Let's do a heshi. Let's do a six millimeter pearl. Has she? Let's do a round, four millimeter round. And uh, another one of those six millimeter bicones. It's good. That's the only two that color I had. So that's our center. I'll use those there. Our center strand. I mean. And then let's do rounds. A bronze metal bead. Let's see if we can squeeze in a cube around and a hashi, around metal bead and a hashi. That's going to be a little longer, and that'll be fine because then we'll just on the other side see how this is kind of graduated up a little this will be the longest and then we'll graduate that'll work out perfect okay let's grab our leaf go through it and then go back up through that row of beads I'm going to have to pick it up. It's just easier that way. And up through that gemstone, up through that edging bead, and pull. Not too tight. All right, so that's our center, and then now that's the the hard part's over, because now all we have to do is imitate these other strands, and our tassel will be done. 
So come back down through. The next edging bead. And get ready for our next row. I love tassels. I really do. Okay. Let's pick up a gemstone, four millimeter gemstone. Oh wow, that one looks round. No, oh, they forgot to facet that one. Okay. Now we don't do the, we don't recreate the center. The center stands alone. But we are recreating this row. So we'll have the metal round, he she bronze rondel he she so it's around he she rondel has she and then Round, metal rounds, four millimeter. Six millimeter pearl. Four millimeter round, has she? I gotta get some more of this color these they call them triangle nugget beads um, but they look like a hissy bead to me cube or six millimeter bead has she four millimeter round metal bead And then we've got a four millimeter pearl. Where'd they go? I know I had. A four millimeter round metal. Yeshi Bronze Rondel Heshi Four Millimeter Round Heshi I hope I've got enough to finish this. That would be done. I'd have to use some, I don't know. Maybe antique copper. I don't know. I'm sure I've got enough though. So let's add our leaf. And then go back up through the strand. And we've got we're just, I'm going to let you do the rest of the tassel and then I'll come back. Now remember, all we're doing is just recreating the strands. You've got these two left to do. So you'll do this one first and then you'll do this one last. Come back and we'll start the necklace. Okay. All right, so what I did was I counted from my middle point, my middle point, my middle strand down here, how many beads I had, and then I figured out which one would be the middle. And right here's my middle, my ninth bead. There's 18, or 18. 
and you know my middle's in between actually but I chose one and uh, I'm wondering if I should choose the one up above actually I was going to do two strands coming out on each side but I decided against that so I think I'm going to go the one up above and uh, I'm going to have to finagle around here to come out that bead instead of going in that bead I need to be coming out that bead so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go through this bead and I'm going to I am not in between these two beads so I can go back reverse back the other way I'll pull that knot right back into that bead so it won't show but let's see they're from the middle so I want to be coming out with this bead so I'm going to go back through this bead get an angle where I can just come out that one and I have to pull that knot right back in and then I'm going to come up and come out this bead so I'm coming out number 10 okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start stringing some beads on since I'm only going to have one row instead of two um, I don't have to be careful about the size or anything like that so I'm going to start out with uh, six millimeter pearl And then I, I'm gonna carnelian, uh, eight millimeter bead, and a six millimeter, um, and then. I'm going to do a four millimeter fire polish oh hold on let me let me change that up a little bit I think I need a little bit of color in between these I want to add a little bit of bronze so I think I'm going to put a rondelle in between the pearl and the carnelian. I'm going to put a rondelle in there. There we go, I like that better. And then a rondelle and pearl. And then I'm going to go with the bronze four millimeter fire polish and then a crystal cube and then I'm going to take one of these 
eight millimeter check icons and then a crystal cube and then another bronze fire polish or a four millimeter bead whichever we're doing um, and then I'm gonna do a six millimeter pearl a bronze rondelle a carnelian eight millimeter and then a bronze rondelle and a pearl and then I think I'm gonna do uh, um, I'm getting ready to add this okay and I'm going to add that with seed beads, you know, wrapped around. And then I'm going to come off that and finish off my strand. But I'm wondering if I need a four millimeter bead before I, no, I don't think I'm going to, I think I'm just going to add my seed beads onto it takes I think 20 to wrap around so there's four five six seven eight nine ten twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen 17, 18, 19, 20. Bring those down and then come up under your flower or whichever, whatever you're using. You could even use a round uh, disc or something here. And then you come back down through the pearl. And then to reinforce, I'm going to come back down through and come up. Let's see, I'm going to come back down through. Well, let's just do it together. Let's come down through, making sure to get all the beads. Let's put them into that repeat into the piece. And let's go down into that bronze bead, that 4mm bronze fire polish 
Oh man. If I wanted to, I couldn't have. Okay, not that many. Alright. Let's tie another knot so we can head back up. A half hitch knot in between these two. If I can get in there. There we go. We're going to go through the loop and pull. And then go right back up through that two beads. And pull that knot up into there. And hmm. Well, I don't know what I was thinking, but we actually maybe we should work our way over to the other side. And do the same thing, work your way over to the other side. The mine happens to be the tenth bead up from the center. And do the exact same pattern. When we get back, we will do the start over here with the C beads and up to the clasp. I think it would be better than cutting our string and doing this side and then, you know, having to cut our string and start over two or three times, okay? So let's um, work our way over and do the same thing on this side that we did right here. All right, I'll see you when we're done. Okay, um, I was trying to figure out how to start off here because, you know, we ended our right here. So what I did was I got a new piece of thread and I picked up 20 seed beads, 11 of seed beads, and I took, took the cord, went through, with the seed beads on it, went through the flower, and then I tied a couple of knots, and that's where, I, and I went through a couple of beads and pulled that knot up in the beads. Now I'm just going to go around, finish going around, through these seed beads to kind of reinforce I'm going to tie a little half hitch knot right here because I can feel that knot pulling through. So I'm going to tie a half hitch to kind of stabilize and keep that in one place right there. And then I'm going to go through and come out on them top beads. There. Now it's not moving. Okay. Now Now we're going to come out with these top beads and then we're going to pick up a 6 millimeter pearl, a bronze rondelle, a carnelian, a bronze rondelle, and pearl. And bring those down. Now when we come back down and reinforce 
when we come when we get to the end of the row, we come back down reinforce and make sure that you go through this seed bead right here on the opposite side of okay. You're coming out here, this one, make sure you go down through this one. Can you see that? Coming out here. When we go back down to reinforce, make sure you come down through the C B that's facing the one you're coming out of now. And we'll I'll remind you when we get there. All right. And what we're doing, we're just going to mirror what we did right here at the beginning of the strand. And then we've got a bronze four millimeter, a cube, a four millimeter fire polish, a crystal cube. One of these eight millimeter bicones, crystal cube, bronze fire polish or four millimeter fire polish. It doesn't matter which color. Bring this down. Now, I had figured out for this to be a choker, um, well, not really a choker, but a, a close to a choker where this would lay nicely the front of the neck and then um, where I wanted it to lay, that this would have to be eight and a half inches and then a toggle. So, I think it's going to end up just right where I wanted it. So let's see, six millimeter pearl, bronze rondel, carnelian, uh, it's uh, eight millimeter, I believe, rondel, and a six millimeter pearl. And then we're going to pick up, um, well, I'm going to use a 11 -0. Um, Let's see which side that's the left. So that will be this. One part of our toggle. And that needs to, the 11 o needs to stay on one side and pick up another 11 o and go down through that six millimeter pearl. And that toggle should be sitting right between those two 11 o's. Right, and so we'll just go down the rail. And the rest of the beads till we get back up to the flower. I have got a mess on my beat board. Ugh. A lot of beads out. Some, a lot of them I didn't even use. And just work your way back up to the flower.
and we'll go back around okay here is where I was talking about uh, we went up into the pearl out of this 11O and now we're going to go into the 11O that's right next to it and that'll even that out and make it centered and then go around go through the rest of uh, the 11 hours This is probably the one that's got the knot up in it. So it might be a little difficult to get past, but that's possible. And then there's the one we originally went into the from uh, the pearl or went into the pearl from and do that again and then what we're going to do is start tying half hitch knots <clears throat> up through this leg of the necklace so let's go under that thread bridge pull up go through the loop make sure that it's where you want it before you pull it down tight go through the next bead go up under the thread bridge oops yep yeah, pull a loop make sure before you pull it tight that it's where you want it and pull tight and go through the next bead go up under the thread bridge form a loop go through the loop pull tight and see I actually captured that and I didn't want to that tail would have been good if it was in the right spot but it wasn't um, and go through the next bead okay go um, go all down through the rest of the the uh, necklace until you get to the toggle doing the half edge knots and we get back we'll do the other side and I'll actually sh do it with you the part with the seat beads in the beginning okay we're back and I've got 20 seat beads on my line and I'm going to pass my needle up through the flower and then I'm going to tie a knot go 
don't leave enough to sew in. Oops. Make sure you don't tie a knot over your seed beads like I almost did. All right, then I'm going to go around seed beads. So we get to the top here. I'm going to make sure I'm on the right part of the flower. Yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. And I'm going to go through a mossy bean. And then I'm going to pick up my beads in the same order. And then I'm going to put on my toggle clasp. I'm going to go down through and reinforce. And I've, we've done all that on this side. So I'm going to let you do, do that by yourself. If you have any questions, just rewind back. Go back to where we did this side just wanted to make sure you knew how to do this and then we get done to, uh, make sure you sew in your ends here and then um, come back and we'll look at our necklace and here's our finished necklace I think it's beautiful I'm happy with the way it turned out <clears throat> And um, I, I appreciate you guys watching, and I hope you make a necklace like this, and I hope you love it, because that's the best feeling in the world is making jewelry that, so especially someone else, you know, for someone else that they love. But um, I've got a couple of cabochons. Uh, where'd the other one go? here and I'll probably end up making a pair of earrings to match this so um, stay tuned thanks for watching everybody